everybody, it's Jonathan from Curto's Ring of Fire in Westchester County, and I am proud to say that nothing, and I mean nothing, in this video has been generated by AI. Anyway, this is going to be another semi-outdoor kitchen analysis, but really with this, um, the, the best way that I could frame this video is that this should be a warning of sorts, something to make sure that you never replicate, you never do, or you will be buying yourself a new grill sooner rather than later. So let's take a look at this picture over here. Well, that is a DCS 36 inch grill on a pre outdoor uh, kitchen uh, somewhere with the dunes behind it and the Atlantic Ocean churning in the background, okay? So what we did with this island, aside from selling him all of the uh, grill equipment, we did build the islands and ship them to him for his uh, uh, vacation home. and. I did warn him when I was told that it was going to be near the Atlantic Ocean. I said, we don't want the back of the grill facing it without a windbreak. And he said, don't worry, we'll be good. I'm far enough away. And I said, no, no, let me tell you a story. So what I did was I told him about this uh, event that happened in the Hamptons. Um, probably about seven or eight years ago, there was a Hamptons food festival that DCS um, was was uh, sponsoring and they did cooking on the beach. Well, they set the grills up, I think like on a Thursday or Friday, and by Saturday morning, uh, the DCS service guy in Long Island got a phone call that he needed to rush out there because they had to set new grills up. The brand new DCS grills had completely, completely burned out, okay, after one day of use because the prevailing winds coming off the Atlantic Ocean were so significant that the heat was pushed back to the front and basically burned out the manifold, the igniters, etc., and the grills were inoperable. So um, keeping that story in mind, I always tell folks that if you are building, or you're gonna do an outdoor kitchen or even a grill on a cart, and you're facing the Atlantic Ocean, you're facing the Long Island Sound, you never want the back of the grill to be facing prevailing wind. Back to the story of this gentleman. I warned him, he said he had it under control. Well, about nine months after everything had been delivered, he came back into the showroom. Hey, how's everything going? Great, I'm here to buy another grill. Well, what happened? Well, I thought I had enough of a windbreak. I didn't. Um, within like a month or however long it was, the grill got completely fried because the wind kept on pushing the heat back to the front and that's all she wrote. And you know what? He wasn't, I mean, you know, listen, these girls aren't inexpensive by any stretch. And he was not pissed at me, uh, nor my salesperson. He goes, you guys were right. I was the idiot. I was the person who didn't listen. I thought I had it figured out. And, you know, I felt bad because I don't want to see somebody have to go back in their pocket again, have to buy something that's expensive. But, I mean, we did, we did give the warning. So I'm going to give fair warning once again. Um, listen, there are some grills that you can either have or you can get a wind guard for them, which would basically the way the wind guard is going to work is the wind's going to come off, it's going to hit the wind guard, and it's going to skip kind of over the grill, so it won't have the opportunity to get in it and push that heat to the front. Um, however, even and like that, that's something that's very relevant, not just like in the Atlantic, you know, on an ocean front or on the sound with there's prevailing winds. I'm talking about if you're doing a build um, on a roof deck, like in Manhattan, for example, we've done them up there too. You have to A, try to move away from prevailing wind. And if the wind is going all over the place, you got to set it up where there's got to be some type of guard or barrier behind it that's non-combustible, okay? So what I would do moving forward is really if you're going to build on the ocean you got to have the grill facing sideways i don't care how far away you are i don't care if you want to be out there working the grill and look at the beautiful ocean but you know in front of you and this and that i mean the hood's going to be in the way anyway so really what, what are you missing but you're just setting yourself up for a problem these grills are very very hot and it's not just the you know napoleons the uh, the dcs the alfresco links etc some of the lower caliber grills, the lower end Weber's, the same thing's gonna happen. The wind's gonna come in, it's gonna push the heat out, and the heat's gonna go, it's not gonna push it out, it's gonna push it forward where you don't want it. These grills all vent from where? They vent from the back. You need to have the wind guard, you need to have some type of wind break, 
but definitely if there's significant prevailing winds on top of a building, in front of the ocean, or anywhere near the ocean, the back of the grill, its ass should not be facing the water, okay? So it's a pretty picture, it's lovely, frame it. The guy should put it in his office, but you know what? It is not the way you wanna set things up because it's not going to work. If there are any questions, hit me up with that email down there, questions at rofgrills.com. All these grills and islands that we talk about, we ship them all over the country. If you need appliances, we do that as well. All major brands, we'll sell it to you with a smile. We're here to help. Remember that, folks. Thank you.